Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. Come inside. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Expat Conversations with your host, Michael Nolan. I want to say thank you for tuning in today and watching this show. Please share and like it so we can uh, get the word out to more people. I want to say thank you, first of all, to Dr. Marco Antonio Cortez Gradado, the rector of the University of Guadalajara, and also the head of the Institute of Investigation, Innovation, and Governance. This is the branch of the University of Guadalajara that allows us to have this program. And so we want to say thank you very much to him to let us have this outreach to the expat community in English. Also, I want to say thank you very much to the Villa Monte Carlo Resort and Spa here on the west side of Chapala in the state of Jalisco. We're right on the north shore of Lake Chapala. It's a beautiful, beautiful resort. If you've never been here, please come check it out. They have a great restaurant. They have really, really uh, fun pickleball courts if you're a pickleballer. And they also have a beautiful pool. They have quite a few uh, rooms for meetings and conventions, as well as many, many hotel rooms. Uh, they have some that are just regular hotel rooms and they have some with kitchenettes. So if you're a snowbird and you're coming down here and looking for a place to find, to stay and live, if you need temporary residency, this is a great location. It's right in the center of everything. So thank you again to the University of Guadalajara and thank you to the Villa Monte Carlo Resort for allowing us to do all of our shows here. Today I have a gentleman on the show that has been involved with me personally for a while. And I want to say thank you to him in front of all of you because he is the gentleman in his company that moved my wife and I and all of our household belongings from Nuevo Vallarta to the Lake Chapala area about four years ago. Yeah, right. January 3rd, they, well, they packed up for two or three days, loaded on the 3rd of January. We got here at seven o'clock in the morning on the 4th of January, and they were already there waiting, ready to unload. And uh, so Winston, te Tor Tor Tortada. Tor you say it, please. Tortajada. Tortajada. Isn't that an easy one, Michael? Don't it's worry. not an easy one, but everybody knows I kind of have trouble with names. He is the run, the manager, the boss, the owner, I don't know, of, is it Chapala Moving? Lake Chapala Moving. Lake Chapala Moving mm -hmm. Services. And like I just said, they'll move your household. They'll move everything you have from the stupidest stuff, like souvenir rocks that I've brought from all over the world. Whenever I travel around the world, I always still a rock. And I've got them from the Great Wall of China, I have them from the Vatican, I have them from uh, one of the main temples in Kyoto, Japan, and many, many, many other places when I go places. I always take a rock <laughs> that's laying around on the ground, yes. right where I was, and anyway, I had a bunch of those. And then I had a couple of cars, and I had a bunch of paintings, and I had a whole house full of stuff. And they very professionally came over, helped pack everything. They loaded it, they organized it, they brought the trucks, they loaded it, they brought it home, they unloaded it, and nothing was broken, nothing was missing. It's the best move I ever had. And I wish I'd have known about them when I moved from the United States down here, because I would have much rather used your company. Very this. professional. Uh, I can't recommend them high enough. So I'm gonna let him talk a little bit about how long he's been down here. I know he's. Uh, from Mexico. Yes, I'm, a, I'm actually a graduate from University he of Guadalajara. He graduated from University of Guadalajara. Mm -hmm. It was really funny, this is just a short side story, but once we arranged everything to make our move, which we did a couple of weeks or a month in advance, we found out he was very, very close friends to one of our good friends and neighbors, uh, Estella. And so it was just, she even gave even more of a relaxed, feeling to us that, hey, you got the right guy, you got the best company, and everything's gonna go great, which it did, so mm -hmm. thank, thank you very much. much. So he mentioned he's a University of Guadalajara graduate, and he's uh, been here. Let's talk a little bit about your bio, mm -hmm. who you are, where you're from, and then we'll get into the company. Excellent. And then you can tell us about how long you've been in business, where you're located, contact information, and what all services you provide, besides loading up all of my <coughs> treasures and moving them <laughs> over here to beautiful Lake Chapala area. All right, well, let me start by saying uh, I was born in Guadalajara. 
uh, born and raised there. I went to university in Guadalajara, the UDG. Um, I graduated in international business. Um, uh, and be, after graduating from college, I started working in the logistics and transportation industry. I did that for, for a good, you know, about 10 years. And it got to a point where I, was, I decided it was time to start my own business. And it was a combination of the job I did while I was working in customs, the job I did while I was working with the logistics and a, and a U.S. trucking company. So we started Lake Chapala Moving almost 17 years ago. 17 years, yes. wow. And in the beginning, we were doing moves from the border to the Lake Chapala area. Okay. And from the Lake Chapala area back to the board. And with the with time we started adding to our service portfolio, we started doing door to door, you know, from Canada and the States to here and from here back all the way to Canada and the States. We started doing regional moves like the one we did for you from PB. And that allows us to serve not only Vallarta, but we do Mazatlán and San Miguel de Allende and Morelia. Uh, we do Cancun and Merida. Merida is hip right now. I mean, we, we oh yes, all the you know so many people moving from Canada to the United States to Mexico for yes. many many reasons. It's just easier to call a professional company that knows what they're doing and let them take all your worries and problems away. Yes, especially when it comes to the process, because it, moving is moving. I mean, you're moving from A to B. The only difference is that for our customers. Most of the time, there's a border or two borders in the middle. So if you follow the right procedures, you're in good hands. Uh, Document-wise, we know exactly what's needed. Uh, in terms of packing, we know what materials can be used for your shipment. Uh, if we're using wood, then we know that it has to be heat treated or fumigated with a stamp and a certificate. Well, see, that's something most people would never understand. The wood furniture has to be treated fumigated, mm -hmm. whatever, yes. and marble and things like that, so certain precious rocks and yes. stuff. Mm -hmm. They're not rocks, but marble and granite, things mm -hmm. like that. If they're on living room furniture, dining room furniture, that has to be treated special. Yes, and, and the crates that we use to ship them, also, same thing. So, you know, just making sure that everything flows correctly, uh, ma making sure that we comply with requirements not only for Mexico customs, but for Canada customs, U.S. customs. We do Europe. We do a bit of Asia. We have a lot of engineers that, uh, after working in Kuwait and the Emirates, decided to move back to Mexico. We do a lot of those. We just finished our first shipment to Colombia. I mean, oh, really? a couple of U.S. citizens, but they were also Colombian citizens that we brought from the States. Uh, we moved them here, and then eventually, a couple of years later, they decided to go back to Colombia. So. We did our first Colombian shipment. So, so it's like Chapala yes. moving, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's a global corporation, a global company. It is. Well, what we do is we have uh, a specific and uh, partnerships with three or four agents that are very special for us. We have a very good agent in Canada. We have an excellent agent in the States. And then we have a very good Europe service provider. And that's important. It is important because you know you can trust them with your customers' goods. And it's, it's household goods, so it's, it can be more personal than that. I mean, we're dealing with not only the chair you like to sit, but the shirts you're wearing and the shoes you like to put on and your art and things that have been in your family for generations. So you have to choose wisely who do you partner with. And, and, and over the years, I think we have developed a good network of agents uh, around the world that can help us provide the good service that we are used to giving our customers. So, well, I can yeah. testify that what you did for us was excellent, and thank you again. The guys were so professional, and, and I was surprised that many of them had been with you for a long time. Yes. I mean, brothers, fathers, mm -hmm. uncles, the whole company seemed like it was one big happy family, yeah. but a lot of the members of your moving crew were family. They they're still are. Blood I mean, family. The, the guys that... Uh, the, the crew that work with your house, they're still with me. I mean, Gaspar and, and Nino, they've been with me for almost 17 years. Wow. And, you know, it took us time to develop the right crew, but eventually we learned that if we used family, it was better because there was no politics to start with. There was no politics <laughs> among them. Nobody was the brother out of the job. Uh, <laughs> they look after each other, and I know their mother. So if I need a well, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, you know your mom. That's, yes, that's important. <laughs> 
So yeah, it's and so we've been able to keep a crew for a long time. So that speaks good on their, their behalf, on our behalf. Our customers are used to seeing their faces, you know. We because we have repetitive customers, and then the guys come in and say, "Ah, oh, I remember you guys from the other one." So it's the same group. Yeah, we like it. Well, why do you want the expat com community to know that's very important that most people don't even think about when you're moving? You mentioned going through one or two borders. Mm -hmm. Now I remember when we moved from the United States here. We had to fill out a huge document for the. I think the government of Mexico. Yeah, the, for the consulate. And and it had to have everything, and not only what we were moving, I mean, it was, we had probably 12 or 13 pages. Mm -hmm. It was all the stuff, if it's appliances, if it's electronics, they have to have serial numbers. So I'm getting into stuff that you probably need to tell us, because you know the real information, I'm just remembering. No, no, but you're right. I mean, we, for example, let's, let's say we're moving a customer from the States to here. Uh, there is three documents that we need from them. One is a copy of their passport. The second document is a copy of the resident visa or the resident card. They need to be a resident in this country. And it doesn't matter if you're a temporal or a permanent resident. Okay, yes, Customs couldn't care less. You are a resident and you, we prove that with a copy of your resident visa or your resident card. And the most important one is the original household goods certificate, which is what you did you go to a consulate in the States or in Canada, if you're moving from there, and you present a letter that states that you are moving from this address in the States or in Canada to this address in Mexico, and that you have never imported household goods in the past. Mm -hmm. right? That, and then you present a copy of your inventory, and they do want you to be more specific when it comes to electronic appliances. They they want you to put serial numbers, brand, models. But the rest of the shipment, you don't have to be that specific. I mean, if you have a box full of clothing, then it's a box full of clothing. So clothing, kitchenware, dishes, um, decorations. But when it comes to electronic appliances, you have to give them a bit more information. Mm -hmm. With that list and your IDs, they give you or they issue a house of goods certificate, which is a document that we need to present to Mexico Customs to import the shipment. And it's very simple. The household goods certificate proves that you comply with the category of a person being able to import household goods without paying any taxes. You're a foreign citizen being a legal resident in the country with a household goods certificate. That's all. So this is when, I'm, when I tell you that if you follow the right steps, it's an easy process. This is part of the process. Well, a lot of companies uh, might not be aware that you need to obtain this certificate. So when the shipment gets to the border, then surprise you need a document that you don't have and then you need to go get it or hire somebody to get it for you and it just adds time to you know you waiting for your goods uh, maybe a trailer being held at the border causing you know the mortgage charges and grievance i mean at the end it just adds stress to the equation um, our main service here is to Get all that stress out of your hands, we take care of it, we handle it, and we deliver your shipment at the other end. Right. One thing that you all did that was not done by the corporation that hired that we hired from the United States to here was when they moved us from Puerto Vallarta over here to the Lake Chapala area, they color-coded everything by room. So all the kitchen stuff was, say, yellow. All the one bedroom was blue. I mean, the boxes, the labeling, and everything. So when it all got here, and they unloaded it and said, where's the blue room? We said, oh, it's over here. And everything was in a blue box or titled blue, yes. we went to that room. The green, the red, the orange. We almost ran out of colors because... <laughs> that, was a, that was a big move. We had so much <laughs> junk that, you, you know, you should... This is my advice. If you're moving internationally or domestically, have five or six garage sales for a week or two before you go because it's unbelievable the stuff that we moved, have moved two or three mm -hmm. times. You think, why did I move this yeah, box yeah. of rocks? You have to think it twice or more. And what I suggest to our customers is, you know, at the end, you have to walk out of experience saying, hey, it was worth it. I mean, mm -hmm. I brought what I wanted to bring. Didn't bring stuff that now I'm thinking, what do I do with it? Or should I do a garage sale here after I paid all this money to bring it? Right? Yeah. Or why did I left, you know, things there that I could have used in the house here? So my suggestion to our customers is 
Think on the things that will bring comfort to your new home. Anything that, by looking at it like your art, or sitting on it like your favorite chair, or your clothing, it will bring comfort on the other end. Mm -hmm. Then it's worth shipping. If it's just a piece of furniture that it can be easily replaced on the other end, don't bring it. Yeah, people don't realize you can buy refrigerator, fridge, washing weights, fast washing machine, things that are heavy. Yeah. Could you more or less pay by the pound? Yeah, it, it's correct? a combination of uh, cubic footage and pounds. But yeah, the, the, the weight drives the price up. Mm -hmm. I, I always tell my customers, go into the uh, Mexican websites of Sam's, Costco, Home Depot, just add the dot .mx and check the prices here. And you will be surprised. Things are not as expensive as they used to be in the past. I mean, with, with the free trade agreement, taxes on import goods from Canada and the States went down. So it's not as, as expensive to replace nowadays as it used to be, I'm going to say, 20 years ago. And not only that, if you purchase your appliances here and something goes wrong with it, then the, yeah, the guarantee will cover you. And you can call them and they'll send a technician. But if you bought them in the States and then you call them and they say, well, too bad, you're in Lake Chapala. I mean, there's nothing we can do for you. It's like so cars. it's a good exercise. Some cars, if you, I had like a 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee when I moved to 2014. And unfortunately, I got down here and found out that Jeep dealerships don't cover the same warranty as they would have in the United States. I had like a five-year warranty on everything. Something was 10-year. 10, 10 Jeep dealerships down here don't cover that. No, it's completely different. But then if you have a 1965 Mustang convertible in mint condition, you may want to bring that baby down here. Well, that's and they can move, I guess, the littlest things mm -hmm. to pretty much the biggest things. Yes, that is correct. Um, I mean, our service includes, we go from customers that are bringing a full trailer, like a 53 foot trailer, fully loaded, to customers that are only bringing a pallet with, you know, very personal things. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's it. In the middle, we do vehicles. We do boats, we do art, the sculptures, I mean, you name it, pianos. I mean, we, there's customers that uh, they say, Winston, I'm bringing my baby grand. So we send a crew in the States to go remove the legs, the pedals, lock the mechanism, put it on a piano pallet, create it, ship it, and then reverse engineer the piano on this end. So it's up to our customers. But we always tell them, it has to be worth it. You know, we ha you have to walk out of this feeling okay. Mm -hmm. If bringing your baby grand brings pleasure to you, then go ahead. I know a lady brought a grand piano, not a baby grand, a grand <laughs> piano from New Zealand. Oh, God. <laughs> to Puerto Vallarta. Yes. And, uh, but you know, that wasn't an easy I, task. But no, they no, got it here. an easy task. But, you know, at the end, you're happy. You know? Yeah, that's the main the, thing. The, this is something, this is a piece, it's not a piece of furniture only, it's your piano. And you used to play, uh, and you want to watch it and, and you know enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Then it's okay, bring it. But again, if it's just a piece of furniture, leave it behind, sell it. What else have I not covered that you need to talk about that uh, most people like myself don't think about pre-move and post-move? Um, very important. Uh, there are certain things that cannot make the trip because they're either not accepted by Mexican customs as, a, as part of your household, or they're considered a hazmat by customs, or they are considered illegal or not eligible for import. It's very simple, it's, you know, cleaning supplies. Most of them will have a hazard label that says it's either corrosive or acid or flammable. Paint in your house, paint is considered a flammable item and it, it won't be accepted by a carrier. Uh, no, no alcohol, no prescription medicines, and no food at all. Nada, nada, not, not even dry food, uh, because Mexico customs won't accept it on, on, the, on the way in. I mean, you can bring furniture, clothing, art, dishes, all that, but there's a very specific list of items. Now if you bring a vehicle, bring. if it's an all-terrain vehicle, like a you know, four-runner or whatever, or a car, does the gas tanks have to be drained, I'm sure? Um, and batteries taken out, things like that? Batteries is unplugged, um, drained from oil and gasoline. And what we do with vehicles, we lower the pressure on the tires. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. So to prevent the bouncing that eventually affects the mirrors, the, the side mirrors and, and the back mirror. So we do that to prevent the car from, from bouncing and then you'll be okay. okay. And, and for importing vehicles, they are not considered part of your household. They can be imported, but we need to, at the time of getting to the border, then we need to treat them separately. Uh, a vehicle either needs to be temporary imported. If you have a temporary or a temporary resident card or resident visa, but if you have a permanent resident card or a permanent resident visa, you need to legalize the vehicle and make it national, all right? That's the only difference. But yeah, I mean, we can bring them. There's always different procedures for the different items that we ship for our customers. One thing that I didn't realize is when you send, you load your trailer in the United States and you send it towards this area of Mexico, it has to go through customs and Ours was held up about eight days mm -hmm. for different reasons. They have to unload the trailers, inspect everything, then they load another new trailer up that's mm -hmm. licensed in Mexico yes. that has Mexican crews and all that, mm -hmm. and they can bring it on down. So expect that. Yes. Are there other, and there's like an eight or nine day delay. Uh, is there anything else that's kind of like well, that that's it's, quirky? It's usually like that. I mean, most of our shipments will arrive to the border on a U.S. Uh, licensed trailer. What we do to make it easier is we ship our customers that are coming from the States and Canada in lift beds or military beds. This is huge wood boxes. They're seven by seven by four. And then we put your shipment inside one or two or 10 of those. So when they get to the border and we need to transfer them to a Mexican trailer, we do it with a forklift. Mm -hmm. And never opened up. Never, never, they don't open them. Yeah. So you. First of all, it's super safe for the items inside because they're enclosed. And second, they're not available for somebody to you know, reach out. Uh, if we need to be inspected by customs, then they will open one of those crates and check the contents. Usually what Mexico Customs does is if they don't see any discrepancies, if they, what they see there matches your inventory list, they they don't want to see anything else. Okay. But if they find something that is not on your list, not declared, something illegal, be sure that they're going to open everything Everyone. and go through it. So one good tip is make your inventory very precise. Make sure you number your boxes, you put the description on them, you write down the brand model serial number for your appliances, and then you'll be okay. A good inventory is not only good for you, it's good for customs because mm -hmm. it eases their job. And you know, the more prepared you look, the better they treat you. And I can tell you this because I worked for Mexico Customs after graduating from, from college. And I can tell you when a customer came to us and we have to inspect them, if they have a list, and we just open the suitcases and look at the list and you know, you know they're, they're okay. Just by looking at the job they did before. They mm -hmm. did their homework, they come in prepared, and they help you do the procedure. Then, you know, they close the band and say, Go ahead. There's some companies in the United States, I guess they popped up 15, 20 years ago. Well, they'll bring a big container to your house, and drop it off, you load it, you do all the hard work, all the physical labor, seal it up, they come, they pick it up on their trailer, haul it, mm -hmm. drop it off in you know, Newport Beach, California. Uh, well, most everybody in Newport Beach, California is moving out of there. Yes. So, <laughs> I think they're losing more people to take it in. But are those things, Available to go across the border also, or do they still have to go through special it, customs? It depends on the company. Like, for example, there's a very famous company in the States uh, called POTS, P-O-D-S. POTS, And yeah. what POTS does is they bring a, one of those containers to your house, and they leave it on your driveway, and you fiddle with it, play with it, load it, and when you're ready, they come, they pick it up, and they ship it. But those containers from pots cannot leave the states. Okay, so there's so, there. so if you use if you use pots for a shipment coming into Mexico, just have in mind that it's going to get to the border and then the customs agent is going to have to unload it and put it in something else. Okay, okay? so that means that they're going to open it and they're going to manipulate mess. your goods and, and put it in. Okay, and the answer to that is these military vans, the the, the lift vans. They're about the same size as the pots. So what we do is we go, we pick your shipment, and then we create these crates and put things inside. The only difference is they're made out of wood, so they can actually come into Mexico. Perfect. And they will be in your house when we come in with the trailer, and then we will open them and put things inside. 
Okay. So that's the solution. There's another service where it's, and where it's called UPAC. They'll bring a 28-foot trailer to your house. Same thing. They'll let you play with it. They'll, they'll let you load it. They'll pick it up. They'll take it to the border, but it cannot come into Mexico. I'll tell you what, if so, you've never loaded a big trailer, you know, you get half of it loaded, and you think, oh my gosh, I forgot, I need that thing up there in the front, you gotta unload again. And nothing fits in right, and you waste a lot of space. One thing I can say about his guys, they are meticulous on <laughs> how they load it. They, they have one or two guys in the truck, and that was their job. The other guys were carrying stuff in and out of the house. Yeah. And they knew how to load, and they knew how to get every square inch. That's the magic of it. And man. it was magic, it really was. And, 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 but I will say one thing, unloading took about half the time loading did. I've always Because you all were so meticulous in how you put everything in, mm -hmm. and then unloading it, just get it out of here, baby, let's go. No, it's always like that. When we're loading a trailer, it can take us a day. And then we get to the destination, day. and you know, a couple of hours, we're done with it, and put everything inside the house. It's very different. Uh, one, of, one of my guys, especially the guy that is in the trailer, what he does is he tours your house. Mm, so yeah, I, take, I, I take him around the house and, and he looks at things. So he gets on the trailer and then he starts giving directions to the other members of the crew. And he's, he says, let's start with the mattresses. And, they bring the mat and then we use the mattresses and in the middle we start placing valuable art or let's say you have a glass tabletop or a marble top. It goes in there. I had all of that. Yeah, and then we bring the big pieces <laughs> and then we start you know, filling in the blanks with boxes and bags and everything. It's like playing Tetris, but with your goods. So. Well, I've talked about a lot of stuff, I've asked a lot of questions, made a lot of statements. I'm gonna open it up to you and just kind of be quiet for a while, which is really hard for me to do, as everybody <laughs> knows. Touch on everything that I haven't mentioned or you haven't mentioned yet that is important for the expats to know. And uh, mm -hmm. well, again, as I was telling you, it, it, it is, at the end, a very simple process. You're moving from origin to destination with a border in the middle, as I mentioned before. That means that if you follow the right procedures, if you are in good hands with a good company that knows exactly what documents you're gonna need, there's no need to work. Uh, when a customer approaches us after they use somebody to move them to the border uh, and then they got stuck there because they didn't have the document that they needed, we jump in and we try to help them. But we recommend using not not only us but using a professional moving company door to door it it all first of all it helps that company responsible for your shipment we are responsible for the items that were picked up in canada or in the states all the way to your house and on the way back same thing we are responsible of your goods from here all the way to back to the states and canada uh, that way you avoid dealing with two different companies that can you know, blame the other one if something goes wrong, right? Well, another thing that's important about this company, they've been in business 17 years. Mm -hmm. Y'all are licensed, you're bonded, you're insured. Yes. If, if something happens, nobody has to. I know some people are moving from Texas to here. The trailer turned over up in the mountains somewhere in Mexico, and, I mean, it was like total disaster. Yes. yes. And that took them a while to get everything sorted out. But the company was, eh, Insured, not insured, whatever it was, it was kind of tough. But somebody like Lake Chapala moving, they, they, they haven't been in business 17 years, and I don't know how many thousands, it isn't hundreds, but thousands of not only international, but national domestic moves yeah, you all have done. Yes. You don't stay in business that long if you're not, you know, really up to snuff on everything. Yes, and, and careful and, and very important, liking what we do. I mean, my crew enjoys it, they have fun. We never, never, never organize two different moves on the same day. The guys, they know what they need to do for the day. They're done when they're done, very simple. A long day, it's a long day, and they understand it. And then if next day we're done earlier, they can go home. I mean, the secret here is never to rush the process. Let them do their work, uh, and it'll be good at the end. I was really embarrassed when you came to our house because we lived in a very secure, gated community. And they came down the evening before because they wanted to get an early start. Mm -hmm. And they brought the big trailer to our house. And our homeowner association came in and said, hey, you can't park that trailer here. <laughs> Even though we had a vacant lot next to us. Yes. So they had to take it right outside the gate, mm -hmm. park it there all night, 
And then at six in the morning, get back in, drive to the security gate. And I thought, so, yeah, it's homeowners association. I don't know if I'm so happy about normal. that. I mean, that's normal. It, it is normal. We have a lot of gated communities like yours. So you just have to understand that what might be good for your customer might affect the normal life of his or her neighbors. So we understand that and we play by the rules. Well, you did a great job. And, and uh, so we appreciated that. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. What else? No, we're, we're available. We, we, we can be rich by phone. We have a local phone number in the Lake Chapala area. And it's what is that number? 376-766. Five zero zero eight. One more time. Three seven six seven six six five zero zero eight. Okay. We also have our web page, which is Lake Chapala Moving all together. LakeChapalaMoving.com. We can be reached by email. My email is that's my personal email. It's LCM at LakeChapalaMoving.net. And we also have a toll-free number for our customers in the States and Canada. They can call eight six six. 104-1513. 866-104-1513. So we can be reached in many ways. The best way for us is an email because in an email, a customer can send us pictures, can make as many questions as they need. We always tell our customers, don't hold back your questions. Maybe a question asked at the right time will avoid a problem in the future. Winston, I didn't know I, I couldn't bring this and now it's a problem at the border. Let, let me know what you have in mind. Well, I remember you and I had four or five phone conversations. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I sent you a bunch of photographs, this, yes. that, and the other. And, and uh, when it came moving day, everything worked out perfect. Yes, it was great. because that allows us to come in prepared. Uh, we're not surprised about, you know, a piano that you didn't mention. Or we were not paying attention and you had very delicate stuff and we didn't bring enough padding material, things like that. So we always try to get as much information as we can from our customers. So on moving day, we come in on time and we come in prepared. You get a lot of great tips. It's you. gonna make everybody a lot easier. I'm gonna give a tip, which I didn't know and I made a mistake. Don't ever make a move on your wife's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> January 3rd is my wife's birthday and guess who's scheduled to move on January 3rd? I'm taking all yes, yeah, the credit yeah. for that oh, one, yeah, but uh, it's Shame only been on you. <laughs> almost three and a half years. I'm still hearing about it. Oh, yeah. that, uh, a piece of conversation this birthday, forever. I don't want to have to move again. I said, uh, you know, okay. <laughs> no one will be moving to me out of the house if, if I move again on your birthday <laughs> or anniversary. So we, guys, we have an expression here in Mexico. Feliz esposa, feliz viva. Yes. Which yeah. means happy wife, happy life. So, Mama's always right. That's another one. That's another tip. <laughs> what else that I haven't answered? We have just a couple more minutes. We we are, we also offer local moves. I mean, for because we do international, we do regional, but we also offer local moves. I mean, if you ever want to move in the area, you want to go to Guadalajara. We just did a, a move for a customer. They were living in a beautiful house in Najijic on the hills, and they purchased an apartment in Andares. And so off we go. And same thing like in your place in Nuevo Vallarta. These high rises have a lot of restrictions. Mm -hmm. So we, we call them in advance. We know that we, have, we can work from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We cannot use the lobby. So we need to go the, on the underground parking. We can only use the service elevator. We need to pad the elevator. Uh, if things are going up the stairs, they need to be padded so we don't scratch walls or handrails. Uh, so what we do is we always work with you in advance. Uh, we program visits to your house. Let's say you, you're moving from the Lake Chapala area to somewhere else. I always schedule a, a visit so I can go look at your things. Uh, it's basic because, because I can actually get to see things that you told me on the phone that they were fragile. Mm -hmm. And then I come in and say, oh, yeah, there you are. I mean, we need to be super careful. Or, the, you know, things that belong to your great-grandmother. And the legs are super thin. And it's a beautiful armoire. So I need to tell the guys, guys, this needs to be lifted before we move it. You, we cannot use the legs because we're going to break a leg of it if we move it, if we drag it. Same thing with pianos. I mean, pianos, uh, most of the pianos will have little wheels, metal wheels. They're not for moving the piano, okay? <laughs> my, my guys know that, but we were doing a local move here in Ajijic and somebody hired us to move this grand piano, beautiful piano. And we come in and there's 
scratch marks on the on the floor of the house that went for five meters. And I tell the customer, what happened here? He says, well, somebody came yesterday, somebody that we hired to move the piano before we call you guys, and they just dragged the piano, oh, and yeah, then yeah, the yeah. metal the wheels on it just scratched the whole floor for five meters till we heard it and stop them, and off they go. So, you know, things like that. I mean, and, and we learn, we learn. We've been in business for 17 years and counting, so every day we learn something new. We work hand by hand with our customers so we can better understand what is it that they need. We are very candid with them. We tell them what to expect. If there is something that we need to be super careful with, we let them know in advance. If the guys find something that, you know, it has some scratching marks or it's break, it's broken or something, we let them know in advance, you know, to prevent an, uh, a discussion in, in the other end saying, I didn't notice it. We try to do it beforehand. Right? Well, as Winston mentioned, there are other companies that are very, you know, especially down in the Lakeside area, there's some really, really good companies. They do a great job. I have personal experience with him. He gives out a lot of general knowledge that, you know, the other companies might give out to, but he's a friend, he's available, he does a great job, he did for us, and he's knowledgeable with the customs, which I've never found any, I've never found out anybody that has a degree like he does and has worked in that, which is very important. Because if they don't, if they say no, you're not going to get in the country, you're not going to get it in here. That, that is correct. So it's very important to have somebody that has his knowledge. And like I said, the guys that work with him have been there a long time. And uh, they'll do you a great job. They may not be open exactly when you need to move. So you may not be able to use his company. But it is a great company. And if you do need somebody, contact him. And, and if they can't do it, they'll say, hey, we can't do it. And he has other friends in the business he can associate and say, yeah. contact and Jose and or Jose B. We can also make help you make a good decision. I mean, sometimes yeah. a customer will come to us, we'll give him a, a, a quote, for, and then they say, you know, Winston, this is not what I want. I, I'm, I'm going to do a garage sale and I'm going to get rid of half of it. I mean, the idea here is to give you as much information as we can. So at the end, you can make a good decision. Well, like I said, I want to say thank you very much. Is there anything else in closing? We gotta, we're about gone. We gotta, it's it's run out of time today, as always. Uh, I want to say thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. He's a great guy, good company. Thank you very much. And the information he gave out is vital. Let him help you or let him guide you to where you need to go. Once again, give out the name of your company, where you're located, and contact information. We are Lake Chapala Moving. We are located in San Antonio, which is between Chapala and Ajijic. Uh, our local number is 376-766-5008, and our webpage is lakechapalamoving.com. I got to make a comment. I, I, I go to a restaurant right close to the shop, and there's a set of golf clubs there. <laughs> I've never seen them move. They got, I, I, I know you have a good cleaner, but they got some moss and stuff on them. We need to get those things <laughs> Read them out and go play a little golf one day. It'll be a pleasure, Mark. Because you know, I had three sets. The, and the sets in my office, they're right handed, but I have a left handed look, so I'm left handed. That you use. Uh, uh, that uh, it's on the back. No, they're, they're just, just, there just for decoration. They're there for show. But well. if you look closely, they're all Ben Hogan Woods, my friend. So they're, oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Winston, thank you very much, my pleasure. friend. Mucho okay. gusto, gracias por todo. Thank you. Gracias. This is the end of this episode of Expat Conversations with Michael Nolan. Thank you very much for tuning in. And if you know anybody that's anticipating a move, be it down the street, in the same state, across the country, or internationally, please take this information, let them watch the video, and they'll learn something, I guarantee it, and it'll make them a lot happier. So thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you on the next show. Happy trails to you until